had asked me, he said, do you want to do the youth-led service? And I said, sure. I mean, I didn't really have anything up to yet, but I, had, you know, I just said, yeah, because I've been praying for about a week for a word from God to describe this year, and I've also been praying for something that not only you all just hear, but you hear and apply, because there's a difference between hearing it. I'm trying to get you to apply it to your life what we preach. And that's not just for me, that's for every one of us preachers. You need to, when we preach something, you've got to learn to apply it to your life, not just enjoy what you hear. So I'm praying, and that very day at the altar, after the Sunday morning service, I'm praying for a word from God to describe this year. I'm, I say it right in the middle of my prayer. God stops me right in the middle of my prayer and says, that's it. And you know, I, I've, a lot of people have been calling 2020 the year of vision and the stuff like that, and that's great. But I wanted a word to describe this year that was from God, for me personally, for this church, and for you all. So if you follow me on Facebook, you already know, but the word he gave me was greater. And that got me excited, amen, greater. And that was not just for me, that was for this church and also for you all. And as, I'm, as I'm preparing this message, I'm led to Genesis 48. And he also says it's not just greater, it's greater in a new, in, in a new way. So today, if you've got your Bibles, I'll be in Genesis 48 and 10. Genesis 48 and 10. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them, and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath, all, hath showed me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand, toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand, and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's hand, head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them, and the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his, that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, and he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's hand, Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also, he also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he is. And his, his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die. But God shall be with you and bring you again 
unto the land of your fathers. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your presence. God, we thank you for what you're doing in this, this church. God, we thank you for the words that you've given me to describe this year. God, I ask you to anoint me, Jesus, Lord, to touch somebody's heart tonight. Whoever might be here, Jesus, Lord, it'll help them grow that they can really apply it to their life and not just hear it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now look with me back in Genesis 48 and 10, the first verse that I read. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath showed me also thy seed. I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath also showed me thy seed. So here Israel is about to die. He's on his deathbed. And somebody says your favorite son Joseph is coming. And he strengthens himself to sit back up in his bed and to live. And you know he didn't even expect Joseph to come. But you know when you're faithful, when you, when you live for God... When you did the right things for your life, when you're anointed, when you're called, when you stay clean, when you're genuine, when you're real, God won't just send you Joseph, your favorite son, but he'll also send you his seeds. He didn't get to just see Joseph. He got to see Ephraim and Manasseh too, because that's the way God does. He'll bless you in the unexpected, in a situation you didn't even expect to pray about. When you've been faithful, when you've been genuine, God And Joseph brought them out from between his knees and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand towards Israel's left hand and Manasseh in his left hand towards Israel's right hand and brought them near unto him. So Joseph, we see, is getting Jacob ready to bless his seed. And the oldest is always the one that gets blessed on the right hand because they're the one that gets the blessing. So he takes Ephraim with his right hand, puts him on his left side because he's the youngest. And takes Manasseh with his left hand, puts him on his right side because he's the one who's supposed to get the blessing. But Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger. And his left hand... Upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long to this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads and let, me, let my name be named on them in the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head until Manasseh's head. Because it, it, it displeased him. Because that's not the way it's always been. The blessing was oldest on the right, youngest on the left. And God was trying to move in a new way, but it displeased him. Because sometimes we get so stuck in our ways in thank, and we get so stuck in a familiarity of a blessing that when God tries to move in a new way, we don't accept it. We don't, we don't, we don't like it. We, it displeases us. But can I tell you that when God's trying to move in a new way, the familiarity is not in the blessing. See, we want a familiarity Christian walk. We want something that's familiar. We want something that way we'll know. We'll be ready for whatever comes our way. But the blessing is not what's familiar about it. The blessing is not what's constant. It's the source of the blessing that's constant. And that's something that Joseph doesn't realize here because God's trying to move in a new way and it displeases him, but he doesn't realize the blessing isn't constant. It's the source of the blessing, which is God, the source of your joy, the source of your happiness, the source of everything you need, the source of your strength, the source of your anointing, the source that puts a roof over our head, that gives us Or 
verse 17. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. So, jo so jo Israel can't see it. He's, verse one that he's dim, or verse ten says that he's dim for his age, so he can't see nothing. So Joseph leads him and helps him. And Joseph, I, I can just see Joseph sitting there and saying, "This old man, he lost his mind. He's done trying to bless the youngest. When Ephraim's man of saves the one supposed to get blessed, and he's trying to bless bless Ephraim. I gotta help him out. I gotta tell him right from wrong because he don't know what he's doing. He's too old." To know what he's doing. I'm sure that's what he's thinking. Now, would you think that? Because I sure would. But 19 says, And his father refused it. And said, I know it, my son. I know it. He also, also shall become a people. And he also, also shall become great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he. And his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And I go over my messages a couple of times before I preach them. That's just a habit that I have. I don't know why I do it, but I do. And the second time that I was going over this, I read verse 19. I read the first part, and God really spoke to me. He, it says, and his father refused and said, I know it, my son. I know it. Because Joseph didn't know. He thought Israel was too old to know what he was doing. But his father says, I know it. He knows it in the storm. He knows it when you question him. He knows it when you don't feel like it. He knows it in the season that you might be in right now. He knows it because he is almighty. He is lifted high. He is the king of kings. He knows it when you don't understand it. He knows it when you question him. He knows it because he is God. He knows what he's doing. He's trying to move in a new way. He's trying to get you to trust him. And if you'll just realize that all shall be greater than he and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. Because in our life with Christ, in our walk, we can be great and you know, we can do good things for God but sometimes God's calling you greater because you can be average and be great for God. You can be a great singer, a great preacher, a great you know, a great a praising the Lord, a great prayer, like whatever your gift is, you can be great at it. But God's calling us greater. Yeah. Through the church. Because He doesn't want you to just be an average Christian. He doesn't want you just to be a, a in the middle kind of lukewarm Christian. Because He's calling you greater. He's calling you greater in your praise. He's calling you greater in your church attendance. He's calling you greater in what you give to the church. He's calling you greater in your understanding and your wisdom and your anointing. There's a double portion anointing on your life that God wants to give to you. There's a way that God wants to speak to you this year, 2020, that is greater than He has ever spoke before. He wants this church to be greater. He don't want us to just be average.
about how God wants, wanted to move in a new way is who he chose to move in a new way. Because Israel, or Jacob, you just find a few chapters back, him and Esau are fighting over the, the, the blessing. They're fighting over the blessing. And Jacob's a deceiver. Jacob, that's what he's known for. He's a tricky guy. But sometimes the thing that you try to get rid of is the exact area that God wants you to move in your life. The things that we pray about, the things that we try to get rid of are the exact characteristics that God has made you to be. He has formed every one of your lives. If you're short, He's called you to be short. If you're tall, He's called you to be tall. Because every characteristic that He's given you is exactly what He wants you to have. And it may be, and sometimes the devil will get in there and mess with it. But can I say that God wants to use every characteristic that you had? That I'm, I'm sure Jacob really prayed. He said, God, take this deceivingness out of me. I'm sure because it wasn't something. We think that, what, that those are our faults. But it's what God gave us. And in his deception is the same way that, ja that Jacob, that God wanted to move in a new way through Jacob. So he went from this. God was scripted. A guy who's different. A characteristic that he tried to get rid of. That God used to switch it up. That God used to move in a new way. God wants to move, use the characteristics that he gave you. The thing you're praying to get rid of is exactly where God wants to move. Amen. Does anybody know that he'll move in a new way in any situation in your life? He'll use you and what you have. We're all made in his image. And when we don't accept what he is trying to do, in our life when he moves in a new way and we don't accept who he has made us to be we don't accept God and he blessed them that day saying and thee shall Israel bless saying God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh and he set Ephraim before Manasseh and Israel said unto Joseph before I die Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again into the land of your fathers. So the six points that I want you to take away from this sermon is that God will bless you when it's unexpected, when you've been faithful in your life. He'll bless you in things when you didn't, that you didn't even pray about it because he's a God who moves that way. Because he's so great. He wants us to be with him and he wants to bless us that he'll bless us in the unexpected. Number two, God wants to move in a new way. We have to accept that God wants to move in a new way. The blessing isn't always consistent. He wants to move in a new way. He doesn't want you stuck in the same storm, the same place the rest of your life, the same season. Because Jesus was on a cross for the season, but you know what? He didn't get stuck there. He rose again. So God wants to move in a new, move in a new way in the same way in your life. Number three, God is calling me greater in every single aspect and everything in my life that I do. In my attitude, in how I treat people, in how I am towards doing things, on working for Him and doing stuff for Him, He's calling me greater. If you notice, number four, if you notice that after Israel told Joseph that he knew what he was doing, and it's the way that God wants to God wanted to move in a new way. Joseph accepted that. So acceptance is also a key that you have to learn. You have to accept that he wants to move in a new way so he can take you greater than you've ever seen. Number five, the blessing isn't consistent. The source of the blessing is. I love that so much. I mean, I love it. I do. I've said it probably a hundred times already. The blessing isn't consistent. God is. God's consistent. God's always consistent. He never leaves you. He may draw back from you, but it's a season. And it means He wants to move in a new way. Genesis 48 and 21 says, And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you into the land of your fathers. Bring you again unto the land of your fathers. And to the end of all of this, God had a promise to Joseph. He's wanting, you to, he's wanting to take you into the land of your fathers. 
He's wanting you to take He's wanting to take you into the promised land because He'll make you a promise. And when He makes you a promise, you have to accept it. You have to hold on. You can't question it. When He makes you a promise and when God speaks in your life, you have to sleep on it. You have to consistently say, God, I trust you no matter what because you made a promise unto me and I know that I'm going to go into the promised land because you told me. You're the one who told me, God, and I trust you. And if y'all will stand tonight as I close. You know, I feel God saying to me right now that if you're here tonight, all the people that are here tonight is not by an accident. It's not. God ordained this time for you to be here. He knew who was going to be here. He knew who the message was for. He knew what he wanted to say. And you might have been pushed here by somebody else, but at the same time, God's pulling you in. That's how God moves. He uses somebody else to push you, but at the same time, He's pulling you in by His Spirit. He's pulling you in by His power. And I believe He's pulling on some people tonight. He's pulling on people to want to have a greater walk with Him and to be greater in everything they do. He's pulling on some people to be led to this altar. Let play. He's pulling on some people to know Him like never before. Because he called you greater. He's moving unexpected. And he wants to move in a new way. So tonight, if he's pulling you in, it might take somebody nudging you saying, Come on, come pray. But it's God pulling you in. Y'all come to the altar tonight. I believe God's wanting to move. I believe we're going to see the promises this year that he's spoken to me. I believe we're going to see it. I've seen it. He showed me some things. And he's calling us greater. Y'all come on now. As they sing, come on.